up, everyone? We're going to be talking about the margin of error today. And specifically, you know, what is the margin of error? What's the formula? What causes the margin of error to get bigger or smaller? And specifically, we're going to be talking about the mean mu. All right, so the margin of error for the mean mu. Let's get into it. So let's check out the question we're dealing with. In a survey conducted by the Gallup organization, 1,100 adult Americans were asked how many hours they worked in the previous week. Based on the results, a 95% confidence interval for the mean number of hours worked had a lower bound of 42.7 and an upper bound of 44.5. Provide two recommendations for decreasing the margin of error of the interval. Okay, so look, 42.7 to 44.5, that's our 95% confidence interval. Notice that that's for the mean number of hours worked and the lower bound is 42.7 hours in a week and the upper bound is 44.5 hours. So people work between 42.7 and 44.5 hours in a week. Now, what if we wanted to make that more narrow, more accurate? Like what if that's too wide? What if we wanna bring these numbers closer to each other? Well, the way we do that is with the margin of error. The margin of error tells you how wide your confidence interval is, right? If you have a number line like this, you have a point estimate in the middle, you have your confidence interval, it looks like that. Well, you can widen the interval and this, this distance from here to the edge of the interval, that's E, your margin of error, okay? So the margin of error formula is right here. And the two recommendations, what are the two recommendations for decreasing the margin of error? Okay, one recommendation is to decrease the confidence level. All right, so what is the confidence level? We'll figure that out. Another recommendation is to increase the sample size. All right, so the confidence level is gonna affect this T star. The sample size is gonna affect this. We call that the standard error. So let's take a look at both of these. A, decreasing the confidence level. All right, so imagine a 99% confidence interval, a 90% and a 70%, all right? This confidence level is decreasing from 99 to 70. Once again, T star is the critical value. Now, T star is directly related to this confidence level. 99% confidence level means that this area inside here is 0.99. And notice that that is going to make this critical value, T star, go further to the right compared to this one and this one. This one has the lowest confidence level, meaning that only 70% of the data is contained within T star and negative T star. So T star will be the smallest for a smaller confidence level. So if the confidence level is decreased, what does that do to your margin of error? It decreases it because as T star gets smaller, so does E. You see that? Because they're equal to each other. They're directly related, directly proportional. So if T star gets bigger, E gets bigger. If T star gets smaller, E gets smaller. So that is the confidence level. But there's more. You can decrease this margin of error and become more accurate by not only decreasing the confidence level, but you can increase the sample size. So what's up with increasing the sample size? All right, this margin of error has two components. It has T star and it has this standard error, okay? So we're gonna focus on the standard error now. So there's gonna be two parts here. As N increases, it's gonna make this smaller. And then secondly, as N increases, something's going to happen to T star. So I wanna focus on two things right now, the critical value a little bit more and the standard error. Right now we're talking about increasing the sample size. All right. Check this out, we're increasing the sample size, right? You got n equals five, you got n equals 50, and you got n equals 500. Check out what happens to the graph as you increase the sample size. The smaller sample size is wider, and that's because the standard error is directly related, inversely related, to the sample size. Do you see this? This is the standard error, this thing right here. So let's take a look. For the smaller n value, you're dividing by a smaller number, which makes this fraction the biggest. 0.894 versus 0.283 versus 0.089, do you see that? 
It's the relationship with the denominator and the fraction. As the denominator gets bigger, the whole fraction gets smaller. So as you increase the sample size, the standard error gets smaller. You see that? As you increase the sample size, the standard error gets smaller. So if the standard error gets smaller, what happens to the margin of error? Well, they're directly equal to each other. So as one gets smaller, so does the other. So that answers the question. Part one, as you increase the sample size, you can make the margin of error this, you can make this smaller and your confidence interval will be more accurate. All right, so the first part about increasing the sample size is that it makes the standard error smaller. Part two, also, something very interesting happens to your distribution as n increases. So not only does the standard error get smaller, making this more compact, but so does your distribution change. So I want to consider a confidence level of 90%. So in here, this percentage is 90% on all three of these. But wait a second, why is this one smaller? if the percentage is 90% on all three of these. Well, we saw one reason is because the standard error is getting smaller, but also I'm calculating inverse T for three different sample sizes here. And notice that as the sample size increases, the T star gets smaller. See that? For a sample size of five, you have a critical value of 2.015. For 50, you have a critical value of 1.676. And for 500, you have the smallest critical value. So why is this happening? Because the T distribution is getting more narrow as N increases. This is the most narrow graph and N is the biggest. For smaller sample sizes of N, it's really flat and wide. The T distribution is really flat. But as n increases, it gets more narrow and it approaches a normal distribution. So that is another reason why the margin of error gets smaller as the sample size increases. Now with regards to that, I want you to keep in mind one thing. We do not know sigma, right? We are using s because we do not know sigma the population standard deviation so to compensate for that we need to widen the distribution so the t distribution is wider for smaller sample sizes but as n gets bigger the sample size s approaches sigma because we have more data therefore the t distribution approximates a normal distribution and it gets more narrow because we're more accurate because we have more data. All right, so let's sum it up. You can decrease the margin of error by doing two things. Decreasing the confidence level from 99% to like 90%. And also you can decrease the margin of error by increasing the sample size. Because as you increase the sample size, T star, your critical value, gets smaller, making the margin of error smaller, and your standard error gets smaller, which also makes the margin of error smaller, making your confidence interval closer together and more accurate. All right, hope that helps.